Okay, let's see. What in the world is going on? Holy cow. Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow. What did I miss? Tommy Willis, old, senile, forgetful, and oh yeah, what was the question? Oh, that's a good one. I got to remember that one. I love it. Love it. Daniel's here. Whoop, where's my center? There we go. In fact, let's just move the camera. Just a hair, just a smidgen, just a smidgen. We're in pre-show here, folks, even though there are only 18 seconds left. We might not start on time. Sorry about that. Just one. Uh, a funny story. Are you ready for a funny story? This is a streaming idiot. This is an idiot story. Yeah, the idiot story. So, um, so I'm sitting around last week and I've got these three, three, <laughs> three, uh, X keys, the P the, uh, the joystick kind the the XK 68 joystick. And I'm, I'm getting them ready for Dave. I'm going to send them down to South Florida. Uh, cause they're going to be on three PCs that we built controlling a bunch of PTZ cameras. And the idea was, I think I can need to turn off the auto white balance on this camera. Um, the idea was that we would set the camera, we would set the, the controllers up so that they would control cameras. And we, we, we showed that in another show. If you want to know about that, you know, shoot me a line. Um, and, and I had to set up the shortcuts in vMix in order to do that. And then I had to export the shortcut file so that I could send it down to them or so that I can, so that I can install it on their PCs when they get everything set up. Um, and I thought, well, the easiest way to do that is to zero out all the shortcuts. You see where I'm going with this story? Yeah. It was is to zero out all the shortcuts in my setup here. And that way it's just got the shortcuts for the PTZ jo joystick. Um, yeah, well, I got ready for today's show. <laughs> and the only shortcuts were for the PTZ joystick. And I thought, oh, no problem. Certainly, certainly I saved the previous shortcuts, didn't I? Um, well, mm, golly gee, no. No, 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 no. The, um, the, I didn't, I didn't. So I said, you know, well, there's got to be a place where the shortcuts are saved, right? 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 Yeah, a configuration file somewhere. Well, I had to go to hell and back, excuse me. I had to go to an old main drive from the previous PC that I retired and to go into the app data files and, you know, the, the vMix um, subdirectory. And in that subdirectory, two other subdirectories nested in, uh, there were a whole bunch of subdirectories for, uh, looked like one for each one of the vMix installs that I've ever done, because there was a list of like 25 of them. Um, and I hit the last, the most recent one, which of course is not the most recent one on this machine, but the most recent one on the previous machine. And, and it was, I guess from, it was from earlier this month. So it wasn't that, that old. So yeah, Rich, thanks. Save my shortcuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think? <laughs> so that was the deal. Yeah, I, 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 you know, and I brushed, you know, brought it back in, brushed it up, cleaned up a few things. Um, hopefully, I haven't tested it. Hopefully, it'll work. So we'll see. Gunner, glad to have you. Daniel, glad you're here. And the other Daniel, glad you're here. Um, the uh, the the deal today, the unboxing. You know, I I hate unboxings, but I thought you know, let's let's pull it out of the box. Let's plug it in. And let's see if it works. Let's see how idiot proof it is. So if you want to send me something to test to see if anybody can figure it out, I'm the right person to send it to. Yep. So, uh, so we'll see. And plus, you know, you guys can help me figure it all out. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, sit tight. We're going to do an unboxing video of the bird dog PTZ keyboard controller. I saw it at, at, uh, IBC 
because the bird dog guys were right next door to the vmix booth and um and so i got to play with it a little bit but you know you don't remember things four months later and Tom, 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 S M H S M H. So much hooey. Is that what it is, Dave? <laughs> Welcome, Dave. So, um, so yeah, actually, you know, I found the, the super hidden configuration file and it saved my butt, but you know that I've saved a copy of this configuration file. Yes, I have now. That's right. So Curtis is here. Welcome. Glad you're here. We can, we can almost, uh, oh, shake my head. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Curtis, we can, we can almost start now. I'm glad you're here. We're a few minutes late. Uh, Ray's here. Welcome. Glad to have you, sir. If you're watching us on Facebook in the Streaming Idiots group, come on over to the easternshorebroadcasting.com page and watch us there because you'll get in on this chat. Um, because we don't, I can't see, I mean, I can see it now, but in just a minute when I get in front of the other camera, I'm not going to be able to see that. So, um, yeah, I can see uh, Benjamin's over there, Eric Pratt's over there, Sandy's over there, Gerald's over there. So you guys come on over here where you can see what's going on and, and join in because you got to join in. That's the fun part. Ch Storm Chaser. Is that Roger? Help me out here. Fiat Ministry. That's Kent. Hey, Kent. Good to see you, man. Well, or good to see your your avatar. <laughs> Tom, do you have any recommendations on marketing live recording production? Any websites or just word of mouth? Well, Kent, think about how you found me. Um and I, th I think the trick, I think the trick is slow growth. The, the trick is to put yourself out there in front of traffic. Um, if, if you are, um, want to produce live stuff, then put some live stuff out there for people to see and then make sure they know how to contact you um, based on the live stuff. And, <clears throat> and the phone will start ringing. Excuse me. Got to get some lemonade. <clears throat> Got to get a good cough. Hold on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, but Ken, I'd be happy to chat with you some more uh, by phone if you want to call me. I'll be free tomorrow. Uh, Tim says that mailing brochures has worked for him. Maybe you need to call Tim. There you go. Ramesh is here. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you. Is Earl here? Is Merle here? Did I miss Merle? Yes, Merle's here. Hello, Merle. We've missed you, man. Glad to have you back. It's good to see you on the uh, VMix Fun Time live show the other night, or, or your avatar, as the case may be. Um, let's see. So, um, what else? I'll say it. I'll say it again, and you may have seen the post this morning. But in two weeks, and I'm really excited about this, in two weeks, the Streaming Idiot Show will come on at a special time, same day, same Wednesday, but it'll be on, hey, Dave, just now seeing you. Um, it will be on Wednesday. We'll have a show next week, but in two weeks, on February 5th, we'll have a special show at 3.30 Eastern. You'll have to figure out your own time zone, 3.30 Eastern, so an hour and a half later than normal. Um, no, excuse me, 4.30 Eastern. Ooh, I better make sure I've got that post correct. It's 4.30 Eastern and because it's 3.30 here. The uh, Streaming Idiot Show is going to be produced and directed by the students at Fairhope Intermediate School in their studio. So I'll go to their studio and, um, and I guess bring some of my presets and... Um, and they'll, they'll produce the show, and some of them will be guests on the show. And then if we have time, we'll do a studio tour. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. They're, they're a great group of kids. It's, it's you know, 10 and 11-year-olds. I think there might be a 12-year-old a, a or two in the group. But it's uh, really smart kids and, uh, and funny and articulate and, uh, and, and the, future of, uh, the future of our country. And um, I'm proud to be associated with them. I was actually hanging out 
with them this morning when they did their announcements. They had some audio I issues, so I was just looking over their shoulder. And the principal was there, and she was uh, just gushing about the studio. And I said, it sounds like maybe I've, <laughs> I've collected some favor. <laughs> I want to cash it in. I want you to do me a favor. She said anything. And I said, let's do a, my show here in your studio one afternoon after school. And she said, oh, yeah, that'd be great. So we're going to do that. Thank you, Daniel. The post says 4.30 Eastern time, so I'm correct. I was wrong that I was incorrect. How about that? Uh, Clint's late. Oh, Clint. Clint, Clint, Clint. we got to have uh, mixed nuts. What else can we have? We can have dum-dums. We can have smarties. Yep, yep. You can already guess the fair for the Streaming Idiots meetup at NAB in April. That's going to be a ton of fun. Um, and uh, Jacob is here. Short memory, shortcuts. There you go. The Elijah Ministries. Can you review options for streaming 24-7 with vMix like best options and pricing? Thanks. Um, best options and pricing. V, the free vMix to YouTube or Facebook, which is free. Can't get any freer than that. <laughs> Clint really needs the Smarties. Well, I man, I eat them all the time, but they aren't, I don't think they're working. Don't think they're working. Glad you're here, though. Um, you can shut up now. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. All right, well, let's get this uh, let's get this show on the road. We're almost 10 minutes late getting started. And um, Vimo, or is it Vemo? Or is it Yemo? Help me out there. No advertising. Okay. Well, that's okay. You don't need advertising. Oh, you don't want Facebook or vMix advertising. Ah, oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. You know, the, the free streaming services have kind of evaporated over the years. There may be one or two of them left, but I haven't paid much attention. Um, vMix is, you know, and, and Facebook are sucking up all the oxygen. Okay, but, but maybe somebody in the chat has got some ideas for you. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, let me switch over to the other studio there, and um, we'll get the show on the road. Um, I did make <laughs> I did make a last minute change, so let me make sure if it works. Cameras, 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 cameras. Uh, there it is. That's the camera. PTZ control. Disconnect. Connect. Yeah, we're good. Okay. And let's let's save this preset before we go any further. Good habit to get into. I save a different preset for each show. And then I go, you know, next week I'll come back to this week's preset and modify as I need. And so I end up with lots of presets, but I didn't end up with lots of configuration files. Err. Okay. Very good, very good, very good. All right. Let's see. Oh, before I forget. If you want a limited edition, commemorative, Rooney and Dan the Banana mouse pad. Yeah, see, Rooney and Dan the Banana. That's on Fairhope Beach. And that's Jake in the background. Um, send an email. You got to be in the U.S. now. <laughs> We're not sending them overseas. You'll, you'll have to ask Tim if he'll send it to you from Australia. But we will send you one of these from Alabama to anywhere in the U.S., um, hello, Ron. Hello, Chris. I want a mouse pad at vmix.com. I want a mouse pad at vmix.com. No spaces, all run together as one word. I want a mouse pad at vmix.com. You will get one of these. And if you want it autographed by Rooney, just make sure you make a note of that and we'll make sure that Rooney autographs it with a little paw print down here. We got that. All right. Uh, Canada, sure, we'll do Canada. Come on, come on. Have to make a trip to the U.S. You know what, just, Gunner, just send Tim an email. I want a mouse pad at vmix.com and ask him to send you one from Australia. Okay, all right, here we go. Note to self, do not delete settings without saving them first. And I bet a lot of people have never saved their settings. They've saved their presets but never their settings, their configuration settings. We probably need to do a little short tutorial on that because it's going to save somebody's butt because finding the settings 
the defaults are like buried in 23 subdirectories. I was about to give up when I got to the 22nd one, but I pressed on for that last 23rd subdirectory and there it was. Okay, enough fiddle faddle. Let's, um, let's go to the set. Let's go to the set. Anybody want to see the ball spot cam? Yep, here's the ball spot cam. There it is. Don't see a ball spot, but we're keeping an eye out for it. And you can see I've reduced my setup to, to one monitor now. Um, I'm trying to shrink down. We're doing, it, it's the old one man, one PC, one awesome broadcast. If you remember those days, the old Vid Blaster days, that's right. One man, one PC, one awesome broadcast. Uh, we're cruising on along. And uh, let's see how we're doing on, with Taskmaster here and see what's, what's eating up all our uh, processes. CPU order. Uh, VMix is doing 22, which includes FFmpeg. And then there's two more FFmpegs that are doing another 14. Chrome is one and a half. System is one. All total. Um, Taskmaster says 41, but VMix says 29. So who are you going to believe? I mean, who are you going to believe? And it says I'm using 50% of the memory. Wow, that's amazing. Huh. No disk, no network. And anywhere from 17 to 20 to 46 percent of the, the GPU, but in vMix the GPU is is maxed. We've had discussions on that. Don't need to go through that again. To uh, save global settings, you have to export. Dave is correct. Absolutely. Yep. 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 One could consider by redirecting the folders containing the vMix config file to Dropbox or something like that. I don't know that you can redirect it, can you? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mix my own lemonade. Thank you. And it's just straight country time from the powdered mix. That's my secret. All right, here we go. Let's go to the... Uh, to the studio, and uh, I'll meet you there in just a second. in my cable for my X keys 80. I tell you what, that is an X key 80 setup. If you've ever seen one, I'm going to go through and redo this one of these days, but uh, I just keep adding buttons and grabbing pieces of paper and sticking them under the keys. I mean, that's the idea of the X keys is that you can change it in a heartbeat and make it do all sorts of things. Um, Cause VMix just, VMix sings with the X keys. It really does. Okay. Uh, we've got Taskmaster equal system use, vMix equal vMix use. Now, Jan, you're almost correct, but I'm going to correct you on that because the vMix does have non-vMix functions. But Martin was telling me the reason it's that way is because vMix calculates CPU usage different than Windows does. Martin says his is better. So there you go. All right. Um, thank you, Troy, for posting that. Um, let's see, maybe we should run the opening while you switch sets. Well, yeah, except I wasn't sure it was going to work. So, <laughs> yes, you can redirect folders and windows. Ah, uh, thank you, John. All right, here we go. Here we go. Enough of this idle chatter. Let's get going, shall we? Um, oh, let's make sure. Is my camera working? Oh, it, I think it turned itself off. Hold on a second here. Maybe it overheated. 
Well, I won't turn it on right now. Sorry, didn't mean to give you that tummy shot. I've got my my Samsung Galaxy S10 gaff taped to the mic boom overlooking the table where we're going to do the um, the uh, what do you call those? The unboxing. Yeah. So, and it, it must have overheated and timed out or something. So we'll get it started again. All right, here we go. Enough, enough chatter. Ready? Let's get started. Well, hello and welcome. Did you hear double music? You know what? I, 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 maybe I shouldn't have speakers on. Sorry about that. <laughs> We've actually started a show. Welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair. This is Streaming Idiots. You've arrived at the end of the internet because that's where you are. You've seen everything else. <laughs> There's nothing else left to see except the Streaming Idiots show. No, seriously, I'm glad you're here. Uh, welcome to all of you that are already in the, uh, the chat room on YouTube. YouTube is kind of our, I won't call it official, but semi-official chat. So if you go to easternshorebroadcasting.com, uh, the, uh, actually the YouTube's right there on the, on the homepage. So you can, you can get to it there. And that's the, uh, the chat that I'll be keeping an eye on, hopefully right there. The setup today, kind of neat setup. I, I need to have one of those cool dr um, drawings like, uh, like they do on the X-Key show or the VMix Funtime live show. But um, I just, I finally, after all these years, I built myself for the studio, for the studio, did it for the studio, of course, a, uh, a brand new uh, PC based on the i7-8700K uh, CPU, which is not overclocked, at least not, not yet, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, an NVMe uh, M.2 SSD is the main drive, and... Um, I think, uh, you know, I don't know what the second drive is. It's probably just a platter drive, probably the same one I had before I repurposed that. Um, and, um, and, it, and I love it. You know, it's, it, I don't see a tremendous amount of difference, but then again, I'm doing everything on this one PC now. We, you know, we're back to the old days, you know, the one man, one PC, one awesome broadcast days where you can do it all on one PC. The previous system was a was an i2600 an i7-2600K, uh, which is a great little CPU and it'll do wonderfully uh, for you know fairly lightweight kinds of things. Um, but I was using lots of graphics and lots of desktop captures and vMix calls and and uh, and and stingers and all sorts of other things that were just really choking it down. So we split it up and, and did it on two different PCs and actually ended up using an i3 uh, as our streaming and recording PC and it, and it was great. Uh, worked really, really well. It's still got that sitting over there and probably will repurpose that. In fact, speaking of that, the retired PCs um, could sit around here gathering dust, you know, just never being used or for that, you know, it's a backup in case I ever need a backup. But I've never used, I've never needed a backup in like seven or eight years. So why would I need a backup in the future? I'm, I, I want to give that away. I want to, I'm going to retool it, you know, clean it all up um, and, and give it away to a, a, a needy, probably a church. So if you're a church out there thinking, golly, gee, we'd love to live stream, but we don't have any budget. We don't have any money. You know, nobody wants to come to our church because we don't live stream. <laughs> you know the gig. Um, shoot me an email. Tell, plead, plead your case. Give me, give me, give me the whole thing. And uh, I've got two systems to give away. I've got uh, a friend, Gio, who has donated uh, to me for this purpose. Uh, he is upgrading some of his systems, and so he's gone through his systems and taken out the uh, GTX 980 cards, which were the bomb in their day. And we're gonna we're gonna put those into my machines and make some really nice really nice PCs for for folks to do some live streaming with. Um, don't have cameras, don't have keyboards, don't have monitors or cables or mouses or anything of that stuff. It's just the PC at this point, and it'll have a copy of VMix on it. 
Um, so it's going to be a great, uh, a great thing for somebody to, uh, to use in the future um, at their church. So if, if you're interested in that, um, it's not going to cost you anything to send me an email. And in fact, it won't cost you anything when you agree to do it. Um, so we're just happy to help. Um, and that's kind of a segue to Friday. Um, the, the Stream Geeks folks, those crazy Stream Geeks up in Pennsylvania, are doing another one of their, their crazy online things. This time it's a worship summit. And they've invited all sorts of cool folks, including me and Al Bunn to make presentations. So Al and I are gonna be presenting, it'll be on Friday, this coming Friday. Um, Al's presenting in the morning. Well, actually both of us are pre presenting in the morning. I think I'm on at 11 Eastern and he's on at 11.30 Eastern. I'll post um, a link to the, uh, I think you have to have a ticket, um, but it doesn't cost anything. Um, in fact, Tommy, if you've still got that link to the ticket you got, if you, if you wouldn't mind posting that in the Streaming Idiots group, um, and I can pick it up from there and post it in the Eastern Shore Broadcasting page. Um, and if you're not sure about tickets, you know, just shoot me a PM or an email, tom at easternshorebroadcasting.com, and I'll make sure you get one. We've got a thousand people registered already, so it's going to be a nice, nice little, nice little gig. Um, Al's going to going to show off his his live streaming setup that um, is mostly supplied by us here at Eastern Shore Broadcasting. But he's also going to talk about where he came from, you know, what he started with and the equipment that he was able to cobble together. And it's a great story. And so if you're if you're just starting out and you want to be inspired um, by somebody that's that's really gone through the ringer on this one, um, then then tune in for Al's uh, presentation. I think it's 1130 on Friday morning. I'm going to talk about how to leverage Facebook um, for the how to leverage the social media power of Facebook for churches. And it's some pretty simple stuff anybody can use. You don't have to be a, a whiz kid in order to do it, but it'll really help uh, jumpstart your live stream if you're live streaming on Facebook. And if you're not, you ought to be. Forget about the politics and the privacy concerns. Forget about all that. It's Facebook is a great tool. And we'll talk about that some more on Friday morning. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. I was going to invite Tess to come on the show today and talk about it. Doggone it. Well, just send me a nasty emails, everybody. And I apologize. Tess, my apologies. Tess, um, Tess is one of my heroes. She is. Um, so, did we talk about all the, the stuff we needed to talk about? Um, um, three more things. Three more things, then I promise we're going to get to the unboxing. Because we're going to unbox this really cool uh, Bird Dog PTZ keyboard. They call it a keyboard, not a controller. That's the big word on the box is keyboard. Isn't that interesting? Interesting. I like that. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to, to John at First Presbyterian Church in Rome, Georgia. Uh, we built a system for John for, for First Presbyterian Church, put vMix on it, of course. And John has gone through and he's taught him. I mean, he has just turned that PC upside down. We sent him, we sent him one PTZ camera. And he did turn that upside down. It's mounted upside down on the ceiling. And, um, and they've been having all sorts of fun with it. And, and John is, uh, is, is semi-retired, um, but I think he's on his second career as a live streamer. John, this is a shout out for you. But John has taught himself uh, scripting. So Al, John's out there scripting with you, figuring out how to make vMix do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and we're going to have to get John on the show here in the future if he'll come on to talk about what he's doing there at, at First Presbyterian Church in Rome, Georgia. It's really interesting to see so many traditional churches getting into live streaming. I know live streaming has real, been real popular with the mega churches and the non-denoms and no, no criticism there. Absolutely, you, you blazed a trail for the rest of them. But it's so nice to see live streaming coming into the to kind of the, the church down the street. Um, so they, they can you know expand their reach and expand their ministry and 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 kind of help some of their own too you know it, you, you know the whole gig we'll talk about that Friday, um, and I want to give a shout out and a thank you, um, a, a local school here in in Baldwin County Alabama Baymet Baymanet Elementary School has selected me to build their new studio based on the studio that we built at Fairhope Intermediate School. So we're really excited about that. They built a brand new school, and um, and I think they're going to actually repurpose 
uh, an old the old um, band practice room in the old building, and uh, and refurbish that as a as a studio. So we're gonna have tons of space, and it's gonna be really really cool. It's gonna be a great studio, and I'll bring you some more on that project as we go through. That's gonna be I think it's gonna be kind of a slowly unfolding project. I don't think it's gonna happen all at once. But while I mentioned the Fairhope Intermediate School, if you weren't here for the pre-show, um, I was I was over there this morning. That's right, I was there this morning. They they had had some audio issues, and and so I just wanted to come in and look over their shoulder. You know, sometimes audio can be a bear if 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 something breaks and you don't know what it is and you don't know how to fix it. And um, and they've got this whiz kid in there, Austin. Austin's ten, you know, and he's got it all figured out. And uh, and, and he said, well, we did this, and we did this, we did this. And I was like, okay, good. Let me show you the next step, the one you don't know about yet. So we did that. And, and, and while we were there, the principal was there, Ms. Broughton. She was on our show here in the studio, excuse me, last summer. And uh, I said, Ms. Broughton, I think, I think I've generated a, a lot of goodwill around here, haven't I? She said, you bet you have. And I said, good, I want to ask a favor. <laughs> she said, uh-oh. And I said, uh, I want to um, I want to do my my Wednesday afternoon streaming idiot show here at the Fairhope Intermediate School in the studio and let the kids run, do, direct and produce um, and actually be guests on the show. We can do it after school. She said that would be a great idea. I'd love it. And the kids were excited about it, too. So two weeks from today, February 5th, we're going to have a special time. It's going to be 430 Eastern. The Streaming Idiot Show will be a little later that day, but it'll be worth it because it's going to be run by one idiot and 12 geniuses. <laughs> These are great kids. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you'll tune in. And I think we're going to we're going to try to do a uh, we'll, we'll do, you know, a pre-show, a show and a post show. And then the post show will probably do us try to do a studio tour. And I'll let the kids tell you about the studio. That's going to be a lot of fun. And it's always interesting to hear about it from their perspective. You know, what is, what's important to them? What are the, what do they like? What are they what was noticeable? Um, and uh, so I'll be really, really interested to see that. You won't want to miss that either live. I think live because you want to ask the kids questions because I'll, I'll be looking at the chat and I'll ask them the questions and maybe get them to answer it. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. It, it will be a lot of fun. Um, so that's coming up in two weeks. And then uh, the giveaway, you can um, contact me, right? You, you can send me an email right now. You can do it right now. That's right. Okay, enough idle chit chat let's get down to the <laughs> troy here's my phone buzzing it's tess <laughs> that's right poor tess oh my goodness my apologies tess i owe you one i owe you i owe you a, a cold or warm beverage of your choice um today we're going to talk about the bird dog uh ptz keyboard now you know bird dog they're all the all the crazies live in australia and these two crazies uh, Eamon Drew and Dan Miles have started this company called Bird Dog. They've, they've started other companies before and have been really successful, and they just saw a need in the market for something that was really, 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 really cool NDI stuff. And they customized, they, they built their own custom full 100% NDI chip. And they, 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 they cracked the code. And they built that chip. Chip first, they built it into this thing called the uh, the Bird Dog Studio, uh, TV studio, and it had uh, HDMI and SDI inputs, and then NDI would flow out the other end. Doggone this thing had tally lights, and it had, a, it, and it was upgradable internally by a firmware update. And doggone if they haven't taken that thing and rebuilt it internally five or six times with different firmware updates where it does tons more than they ever intended it or they ever said they intended it to do. Then they followed that with the Bird Dog Mini, which was just HDMI only and, and, and as you can imagine, smaller. You know, it was HDMI in, NDI out. Well, then they reconfigured it so it would go NDI in and HDMI out. I mean, who, who, who thunk it? Um, so... So that was cool. And then they've got some other gear. They came out with the P200, which is a full NDI 
uh, camera based on the one inch Sony sensor, which apparently I haven't seen, I haven't had one here in the studio. I've seen them. So I'm at IB, IBC when, when I was cruising through their booth and they got all sorts of awards for it. And then they've recently come out with the P100, which is a full NDI um, PTZ camera. Both the 200 and the, and the 100 are PTZ, PTZ cameras. And they've come out with a PTZ controller. And the PTZ controller is, um, well, let me, oh my gosh. Check the QR code, it may be outdated. Yeah, you know, that's the configuration. Um, but thank you, Tim. Um, I want to, I, I've got a camera, I've got a phone duct taped to the mic boom right there that I need to take down and turn the NDI cam app back on because I think it may have overheated or something so that we can get a down view of the table where we're going to do the unboxing. So, um, so bear with me just a second. Um, yeah, bear with me just a second. You're going to get a tummy shot. You're just going to have to suck it up and bear with it. Yep, right there. Okay, hold on. Let's see. You can hear me untaping. You probably can't hear the mic moving, although you might be able to. There's one piece, one side. There's the other side. We'll undo that piece and we'll undo that piece. And now let's see if we can't get this app going here. Double tap, swipe. Let's clear anything that's not necessary. And we'll close everything so that we don't heat up anything any more than we need to. And we'll get the NDI app going. And we'll turn it on. And yeah, we're working. Okay. Now this is the um, standard definition version. So let's go ahead and bump it up to the high definition version. And let's turn off the microphone before we get in trouble. And this is the shot right here. There we go. And uh, there's the table that we're going to go. So let's go back. Uh, let's go back there for just a second and we'll get this guy hung back up so that we can all see. Here. It's one of those situations where I need three hands or a partner. There we go. And I need to probably not put the, <laughs> the tape over the camera lens. <laughs> I was wondering why that got so blurry all of a sudden. Let's try again here. Thank goodness you guys aren't watching this in real life. I mean, you aren't watching the camera while I'm putting it on because you'd be going, Tom, 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 your finger's on the lens. It wasn't my finger. It was. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Eh, that'll probably work. Not quite that much there. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is the Bird Dog PTZ controller. And we're going to have to swing this boom mic out of the way a little bit. Oh, but it's got the camera on it. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Get the Smarties. You can see I'm almost out of Smarties and, and Dum Dums. So let's get this up here. All right. And this is the Bird Dog PTZ keyboard came in the box. I, I, I will confess, I did open it just to make sure it was in here, <laughs> but I haven't done anything with it. Um, and uh, bird dog, bird dash dog dot TV is the URL. You can see it right there. And um, it shows a nice picture of the, the, uh, the back of it. And then it's got uh, some interest, an interesting diagram on that side too. So there we go. So We'll open that guy. I love these little flaps here. And we'll get the full opening experience. Ta-da! 
There we go. Okay. So we've got power cable and the 12 volt adapter for the power cable. We've got a, a flat ethernet cable. Interesting. We've got a, um, a junction box is what this thing is labeled. Labeled junction box and it's got an, an RJ45 jack and a, a DC 12 volt jack. The RJ45 jack I think the lighting, yeah, that's better. It says controller, so that's going to connect to the controller. Then on the other side, it connects to the camera, and then it has uh, connections for, I guess that's RS422 or 232, and then another jack right here, uh, a terminal. So we'll set those aside because we're not going to use those. And then you say, well, what's that white, that black thing? Well, that's part of the controller so that stays put while we pull this piece of foam out. I like how they got the pockets in there. That's good. And that uh, keeps everything in one place. You could probably use that long term if you have to transport it. Uh, just put it in, a, in a, a nicer box than this cardboard box. Okay, so we've got the controller here. And the first thing I notice when I pull it out, other than that it's covered with plastic, is that this sucker weighs a ton. It weighs I would bet it weighs four pounds. Um, holy cow. The bottom has got a, a f nice long uh, rubber pad on the end of it so that it's gonna stay at the right angle. You can see the angle of it right there. And it's firmly attached. Well, I take that back. It's not firmly attached. <laughs> oh, it's magnetic. Ah, okay, so it's got some of those rare earth magnets in it, and it's got two divots, one on either end, so that I can center it over the divots, and then pow, there it goes. Hey, that's pretty cool. Um, it's got some nice legends on the back of what the tally contacts are, the RS-232, the NDI IP, and the RS-422 connections. There we go, and then of course the part number, serial number, model number, and then a QR code of some kind. Um, it is, let's, let's pull off this little thing now that we realize it comes off. Look at that. And the, the, uh, the labeling here is for the ports here. So we've got, um, or I'll, I'll put it up like this where I can read them. So this is gonna be 12 volt uh, DC. This is for your lock. That little thing right there. Can you see that? Let's try to get the light. There we go. So you can put your Kensington lock there. That's for your headphones. So that's going to be for comms. Um, this is the, the, the terminal uh, for the tally light connections that we showed you just a second ago that I called something else. Um, and then a connection for the RS-232 for the NDI and IP. And then these last two appear to be given the same name. Let's see if we can get the camera to kind of focus on that so that you can see it. No, no, it's not going to focus that closely. Um, it, but it's B-RS422A and it's got what looks like two ports there. And then the last is a USB 2 port uh, for a firmware upgrade. So I guess if you don't upgrade it uh, over Ethernet, then you would uh, upgrade it over USB. So that's the that's the back. Nothing on that side, nothing on that side, nothing on that side. So and they say it is PoE. So in just a minute we're going to fire it up. I've got a, a PoE Ethernet cable here. And then let's look at the front. Let's turn it around. And so we've got uh, you know of course the joystick. Um, Fairly nice movement, and it will center itself, and then it has a, a fire button on the top. We'll figure out what those do in a little bit. Um, the other thing that's noticeable about the joystick for your left hand is going to be the zoom. Um, 
pretty loose action there. Looks like you can probably just put your finger in the middle and swing it back, back and forth to get where you need to be. Um, the, uh, the bank of buttons here on the left are intended, well, let's see, it's labeled, uh, the top one is labeled iris shutter. And then the second two are kind of linked together. You can see the, the labeling there. Um, and it says lock white balance, one push white balance. Um, and then this button is labeled R, this button is labeled uh, B. And from what I understand that they actually light up in different colors, pretty cool. And then the bottom button is labeled focus near and far uh, with, uh, with auto manual and one push uh, autofocus. Excuse me, sorry about that sneeze snuck up on me. From what I understand, these are not functional today, but uh, in typical bird dog fashion, uh, they will be enabled by a firmware update um, from what I can read within the next week or so. Um, so we'll be sitting, sitting tight, waiting to see this so that you can control the, the, uh, all of the, the exposure and the white balance, um, and the focus near and far on this guy right here. Um, moving towards the middle, uh, we've got a series of six function, uh, programmable function buttons. The documentation, which by the way, where is the documentation? Hold on a second. We gotta have the owner's manual, right? There's another cool piece of foam with a cutout. Another cool piece of foam. And there is no documentation. Maybe I just got one that was a little faulty. Um, but there is no documentation in this box. So. I knew that. I'm just kind of teasing you a little bit. Um, I knew that was the case, and so I've got it up here on my, my laptop close by. We, we'll, we'll look into the documentation in just a minute. Documentation, nicely done. In fact, the bird dog guys tend to do everything very nice, so it has a nice visual appeal, um, and it doesn't look like it just came off the back of a, you know, a, a, a Windows XP machine running WordPerfect. Um, Although I loved WordPerfect, it was great, great software. Okay, let's go back to this guy for just a second. So uh, we've got these functional buttons, and according to the manual that I read earlier, uh, the function buttons kind of have a limited ability uh, to do certain things with the camera that are sort of pre-programmed, and you just basically pick, you know, if you want F1 to turn off the camera or F6 to turn off the camera, that kind of thing. Um, but my, my hope would be that they would expand those functions maybe to be, to be used by vMix. Um, and then we've got a series of, of buttons here, Backspace, Search, Inquiry, and Add, and then Menu and VLC, um, and then another section of buttons here, Reset, Preset, and Call, which have to do probably with our camera buttons here, uh, with, a, with a monitor button and cam button. And then above those, uh, we have a setup button and then a select and value button that are the, uh, the PT speed and the zoom speed. And then with a, uh, a press of the button, uh, you can actually reprogram -pro the joystick, or maybe you have to press it and hold it. Um, you can reprogram -re the joystick so that if the camera's, if the camera's facing you, for example, uh, going to the right, we'll, we'll turn the camera the way you're expecting it and then the same with up and down. Um, or if you have it mounted upside down or something like that and you, and you want it to, to perform the way you expect it to. Um, so they, they thought about some of those things. Um, the part I didn't mention right is a, is a little, uh, little LED screen here, um, or maybe an LCD, I haven't, haven't looked at it that closely yet. Um, and that's really where the, that's where the action is. I don't think you can see the cameras there, but you can, um, you can see what your controls are doing. I did neglect to mention this, this silver button here on the end. Uh, I thought at first it was kind of a rivet. I thought that's an interesting place to put a rivet. And it's an on off button. So there you go. And I guess it's just, oh yeah, there we go. It stays in for on. 
and then uh, comes out for off. So you can tell by touching it. Um, as as Peter's saying in the in the chat, the um, that there there's still some pieces of this that are being ironed out, um, but you know that's kind of kind of typical bird dog is that they've got all the all the basics here, and they know they can come back in and 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 play with the guts, and um, and make it do different things. And in this case, they've got some things to to straighten out, uh, as well as some things to uh, to enable. Um, the retail on this is, um, I think the manufacturer suggested retail is $15.95. Um, the street price is $14.95. We've got them in our store right now. So you can uh, you can go get one. This is actually one that a, a good customer, Scott up in Wisconsin, um, asked me to buy. And he said, you know, have it sent to yourself first because I want you to figure it out before you send it to me. Um, so I'm very appreciative of Scott. And we're going to play with that and uh, have some fun. Let's go ahead and put our magnet back on. And we'll get that in place. And then if you guys are game, um, you know, we'll go ahead and hook this guy up and see what happens. I mean, why not? It's still under warranty. Um, so let's see. We need a cable with PoE. So we just happen to have one handy. Let's bring it in here. And uh, we got we got four ports to choose from. I think it's going to be the one that says NDI IP. So let's try that one and see what happens. That's going to be the NDI IP is the second one from the center. And so we'll go in there and see what happens. I guess we might need to turn it on, huh? Let's try that too. Here we go. Ooh, lights. And I don't know if you can tell right here on the screen, it says keyboard initializing. And we'll give it a second to do that. Actually, we'll give it as long as it takes. So uh, the PoE is working, and we would assume that the uh, the Ethernet is is connecting to the switch, and that uh, it's probably setting its own IP address. Um, okay, and. Uh, so it's saying CAM1 V-232-9600 NO, and then a plus in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, in, in my quick read of the, of the uh, documentation, this is the plus right down there. Um, the plus indicates that it, it, it did configure itself. Um, we've got one camera here that is uh, available on the internet, I mean, on the, the, on the, on the network. And so, um, you know, could we be so cool, would it be so cool that it would work like this or automatically? Nope, nope, doesn't. All right, it says LR is off and up down is off. Um, we're gonna have to get the manual out and see what that, that means. This sucker is heavy. All right, let's put it down for just a sec. And if there's somebody out there that's got one that has some suggestions of what we think we should do next, holler. Meanwhile, I'm gonna bring the documentation up here. The, uh, the surface didn't come with it. Let's see. Peter says you have to set the IP address first. Okay. Well, let's give that a try. So we've got the uh, documentation here. And we will... Peter says press setup for a, view, a few seconds. 
Okay, so we're going to press setup right here. 1001 is asking for a password. Okay, and I seem to recall somewhere that the password was 0000. zero, zero, zero. There, Peter's got it. 0000. zero, zero, zero. It says camera settings, keyboard settings, or exit. So we've got we've got three choices here on the left. And my guess is that one of these knobs, yeah, there we go, will allow us to, let me see if I can get that camera zoomed in a little bit more. Hold on. Sit tight. There. We, well, let's just see if we can't. We'll move the. <laughs> the heck with moving the camera. We're just going to move the controller. There we go. I bet you can almost read that. I'll tell you what, hang on a second. Let me run over to the VMix workstation and put that input on sharpen. That might help clean it up just a little bit. There we go. That might help just a tad, make it a little easier to see. All right. So we're going to go to keyboard settings, and then I'm guessing we'll just press this to select that. Yeah, there we go. And then IP configuration. So we'll press again. And then it says type is static, IP address blank, 192.168.0.100. Uh, well, we probably want to, uh, and, and Andrew is there, uh, mind ITAS is Andrew down in Australia. So we need to all send him a fire extinguisher. Um, and that's not a joke. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Um, and we want to send it to our address, so let's go down to that one, and I'm just going to press, I wonder if, I, if it's pressed to select, there we go, and we're going to change that to a 1, and then 100, and we'll select that, okay, and... What do we want to do now? That's it. So we're going to press. Well, we've got it set for our network here. I think 100 is available. And let's see how we can make that set. Do we press setup? Rotate to exit. Ah, there we go. Yeah, the, I don't know if you could see it. This it, We've got a four-line display right here. So as I come down to the third line and then through the, the different parts of the IP address, then it jumps down to the gateway. And we'll set that for one. And then we'll go exit. There we go. Okay, and Peter says you must save it. Press the zoom speed knob. All right. Well, let's go back and see if we had it. Did it save? No, it didn't save. Thank you, Peter. All right, so we're going to go back and put in one there. And we'll put in one there. And we'll press the zoom speed knob. Okay. 
and then we'll exit and let's go back and check it one more time so we'll just go into there and we can see that indeed we've now set it so that it should be on our network all right so we're going to exit and Peter says, go to the info stream and check the IP address. Good. Thank you, Peter. We're good. All right. So we've got that configured. Um, so we are, we should be on the network. Um, and let's see if we go button, light, assign key, factory default, GPIIO, password settings, joystick, zoom, model info. Disk IP settings, control mode, exit. So let's go to exit. And we'll go to exit here. And I don't think that gives us camera control yet. No. All right. So let's go back into that menu. There we go. And uh, let's do something with the camera. Camera one, title. What will we make our title? Um, actually, technically, this is uh, a different. Uh, well, we're not going to worry about. How would we? Oh, I see. Okay, it's got it's got keys there. So we're going to make this um, PTZ one. So it's P. Here we go, and then T, and Z, and 1. All right, so far so good. We'll come down to the next line, protocol Visca. And baud rate, port, exit. So if we mash that, okay. So let's see. All right, Peter says press search to see all NDI cameras on the network. Well, there aren't any NDI cameras on the network. I've got a PTZ Optics 12X. Um, and it's not NDI. Okay, so we have to go back to the title and put in our title again because we didn't save it. It doesn't automatically save PTZ. Whoops. Can we go backwards and delete that? Um, nope. That doesn't do it. Title. Shall we try again? Doesn't seem to be. Oh, there's a reset button. Does that do it? Nope. Well, right now it's set for PTY9. We'll leave it at PTY9. So we'll press the zoom. Okay, and we'll come down to protocol, and then we can use, oh, use the zoom to change the protocol. There you go. So we've got, Visco is what it comes up with, and then Pelco D, and Pelco P, and Visca IP, and NDI, and then back to Visca. So let's go Visca IP. I think that's what that camera is. And... So we'll go, will that save it? Yep. All right. And Peter says, use backspace above F1. There we go. Okay. So we can change it to what it should be. PTZ1. Hold to save. Come down. Whoops. Come down to the protocol. Exit. We'll go back in and check PTZ1, Visca IP. And let's 
just go in and see the IP address. We want to set the IP address of the camera now. So it's 192.168.1, and then the camera address is 102. So we're going to save that. And then the payload header, don't know what that is, but it's on. Um, port 52.381 and exit. So we got exit. Let's go back in and check and see. Yep, it saved our, our camera presets. There we go. I guess, you know, once you get in the hang of this, it'll work out okay. All right, so there we go. So let's see if we get an exit. Camera 1, Visca IP, PTZ 1, 192, 168, 1, 102. And no camera movement. Okay. So it looks like we need to do some digging in here as to how to set up a camera over IP because at first blush it uh, was not. Let's look at the let's look at the manual. What do Peter and Andrew know? I mean, really. Just because somebody says something doesn't mean they're right. I think I saw a PTZ set up back here in the in the instructions IP control cross po protocol control keyboard configuration IP setup here we go IP address I think that's what we already did with the IP address and then Assigning the function keys. We're not ready to do that. No siree. Let's see what we got here. You know, part of the part of the fun in doing this, part of the fun in doing this is <laughs> sorry about the shot, is just stumbling through. So you get a chance to see what it would be like if you were me and this showed up at your doorstep. And you could say, okay, well, what is it? And how does it work? And what do we do with it? And how much of it is intuitive? And how much of it do we need to look in the, the manual? So um, there you go. And by the way, that, that uh, QR code will take you to the, the purchase page if you're interested in pur purchasing. Um, adding an OnViv camera. How to assign a camera. Ba -dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. You must know the IP address of the camera. It must be on the same subnet as the keyboard. Um, so it looks like we're good. Scanning local area network available for OnViv cameras. Okay. Cameras can be detected on the network and added to the keyboard to be controlled. Pr press the search button to bring up the auto search menu. So let's, can we try that here? Where is search? Search is right there. So we're going to press and hold search. There is search. Select protocol. Visca over IP, NDI, IP, or exit. So let's press that guy. Start search now. Yes. Search cam. Zero of zero. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go down to exit and try again. See what we missed. No exit. Uh, so we've got Visca over Visca IP, NDI IP, and exit. So we'll go back to Visca IP, start search. Yes, searched camera zero of zero, didn't get any. Let's just for fun, let's go search NDI IP, start search. Yes, searching. Aha, it's actually looking now. Last time it just zipped there pretty quickly. So it's searching the network. And it said searched camera zero of zero. So we'll go back to exit. 
since we've done that once, let's just see if we can get a better result here. Nope, same thing, didn't find any. Um, so what did we miss? Was that, yeah, I think we got it. A list of discovered cameras will appear showing the cameras that have been discovered. Scroll through the discovered camera list using the zoom speed knob. Well, we didn't discover any. So there. Okay. What might, let's see. Okay, here we go. Adding a Visca over IP camera to the keyboard. Adding manually from the local area network. Select your address. Blah, blah, blah. Did we, did we find a camera before? Let's see. Nope, no, exit, exit, exit. So it looks like we've got a camera here, but it's not, it's not cooperating with anything. Well, we probably need to know how to operate this in order to make it work. Safe statement, wouldn't you say? All right. Peter says, we can't get it to work with NewTek and Panasonic NDI cameras, and with bird dog cameras, it's not stable over NDI. Well, that's not good news. Tom, check if you can ping the IP address of the keyboard from your PC. Check the subnet, Otis says, check the subnet settings for the controller and camera on the network. I think we've got, let's see, well, let's go back to setup. And we'll do the keyboard settings, IP configuration, 192.168.1.100, 192.168.1.100. So I think we're good there. Um, Visca IP setting, wonder what that is. Payload heading on port and exit. Um, we might have to come back to that and try to figure out what that means. So let's go back to exit here. We'll go to camera settings, camera one, title, PTZ1 protocol Visca IP. Exit. So maybe we need to hook up. P well, it says PTZ1 192.168.1.102. I think that's the right address. Let me go check the address for that camera before we get too far into troubleshooting. Try the simple stuff first. Hang on a second here. One of those crazy streaming idiot shows. 192.168.1.102. Yes, that is the camera. All right, so we've got the right address for the camera. We do. Dave says, just because you entered a desired IP address doesn't mean it's been assigned to the device. Sometimes you have to restart the keyboard. Well, we'll try that then. So we'll turn the keyboard off. Count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We'll start it again. I like all the pretty lights. Probably be interesting if it were a little darker in here. All right. And 
Andrew mes messaged me. So let's pull up the message here and see what Andrew says. Says, you get a free Chick-fil-A sandwich. Oh, no, that's somebody else. So sending you this here because it's not public yet. There's a bug. Oh. <laughs> So, okay, so basically uh, what we're trying to do yet has not been uh, released as part of the firmware that is, is about to happen. Thank you, Andrew. That would, uh, that, that would have driven us all crazy. Of course, now, now we're going to touch it and it's going to work. Nope, still didn't work. Still didn't work. So we've got a, a beautiful piece of, uh, of engineering here that's not quite finished not ready for prime time, shall we say. Um, so what, what's, our, what's, what's our conclusion based on this brief, very brief experience? Hang on a second, let me get back here. And get back to you guys. There we go. Um, based on this, this <laughs> Clint, based on this brief experience, um, I'm impressed with the, uh, with the heft and with the layout. And I understand this is not, um, this is not a bird dog original. That's because I saw something that was exactly like this, had a lumens la label on it. So obviously it's, it's made by somebody else, but I suspect if we were to take it apart, uh, we would find an extra chip in there, the bird dog chip. Um, and so it's, it's not ready for prime time. That's, that's the bottom line. It's out there. It's in the, cha it's in the distribution channels. Um, and I think the timing was, hey, maybe we can get it out in the channels. And just about that time, we'll get our, our firmware update that uh, enables some of these features. Hassan, welcome. Glad you're here. Um, so um, knowing that, uh, that Andrew is, is down in Australia near the bird dog guys and has been communicating with them over back channels, if he says that we need to hold off just a little bit, then, uh, then we'll, we'll hold off just a little bit. So, um, so we'll see. So this is, uh, if this is like any other bird dog product, uh, it will be, it's, it's really funny how this works. You know, normally when you buy something, you get it. You buy a car, you know, you get the car. And, um, and I'm, I'm in the market for, for, a, for a car that's for a newer car, not a brand new car that's out of my budget, but for a newer car. And, and so I'm, I'm thinking about a, a, a Chevrolet. And if I went out and bought a Chevrolet right now, um, it's not like I could expect Chevy to call me up and say, Mr. Sinclair, um, <laughs> We'd like you to take your car by the dealership because we want to give you a new engine and a new transmission. <laughs> but that's what these bird dog guys do. They've, 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 here's the car, and, and it's a really nice car, it looks like, uh, and it looks like it's going to last a long time. And they promise that they're going to they're going to give me a new tires and a new engine, and it's going to be able to do things that, um, that aren't even in the documentation. Um, things that they will figure out how to make it do in the future. So um, Andrew says it works great with the bird dog cameras, which I which I don't have, and and of course, um, but but not with the P1, says Peter. Um, so we would expect it to work with their gear first. Um, Daniel said, "Did you enter the camera's IP address on the keyboard?" Yes. Um, and, uh, and, and the camera and the keyboard have different addresses. So I think we're good there, but, but I, I do understand that, that what we've got right here is just not quite ready for prime time. Um, so, but there's a, uh, again, there's a, a, a firmware update that the word on the street is that should be out in the next week to two weeks. Um, so, uh, we will wait and see on that one and keep you apprised. This is a work in progress, obviously, 
and there may be you know a, a, a trick or two that uh, that I pick up along the way that will enable us to do what we couldn't do today and if that's the case then we'll definitely let you know um, Peter says check the port number over the visca, visca IP settings yeah yeah I did Peter it didn't mean anything um, so you know maybe we can we can play around with that maybe there's something in the camera that I need to change um, in order to make it make it uh, visible on the network but I'm not gonna bore you guys any more than I already have um, but I do appreciate you taking time to pop in on me today I'm you know with as with all the bird dog gear I'm impressed um, as with all the bird dog gear so far and this is pretty consistent um, with my experience anyway is um, you know good features will will continue to come out and that uh, early adopters and and I would put myself and and uh, and and my client in the same category um, that that Scotty and I are, are teaming up as early adopters on this product because it's only been shipping for what a week maybe two weeks um, let's see um, Andrew says you can show the web interface browse to the IP address all right well let, let's see if we can do it right here thank you Andrew that that that's be good let's let's take a look at it here and if I can get it here then I'll bring it up for you guys over there and and the password I think is bird dog um, it's not the same password as before no that must not have been it oh yeah that was it okay so there we go yeah serial number IP address firmware 1.0.2 um, and uh, and let me uh, let me get out of this and uh, we'll close out the show we're gonna post show I'll go over to that desk and um, and show you this this is this is, is pretty interesting so thank you for taking time today if you, if you can't can't stay with us for the post show no problem I understand show started late ran late you know <laughs> what's new um, but if you can stick around and we'll take a look at the interface of the uh, controller the web interface of the controller like the rest of the bird dog stuff's pretty pretty cleanly laid out and uh, the simple guy says, my conclusion, never buy any equipment until later or after all or most of the bugs are fixed. I always wait three to six months before even thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Um, thanks for tuning in. Remember, two weeks from today, we're coming, on, we're coming to you at 4.30 Eastern Time from the Fairhope Intermediate School Studio. Next week, I'm not sure what we're doing. Don't forget about the Streaming Idiots Meetup at uh, NAB. In April, streaming any I mean NAB starts on Sunday this year, not not Monday. So we're going to have our party Monday, not Tuesday. But we'll make sure you get an invitation, official invitation to that. Uh, don't forget to back up your VMix configuration settings, right, Dave? Thank you very much. We'll talk to you in just a minute. Hang around, and other than that, we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. So let's go to the post show. There we go. All right. So let's take a look at um, at the IP address. I mean, at the IP interface for this guy. Um, and we're going to add an input, and it's going to be a web browser input. And the URL is going to be 192.168.1.100. And we'll take it full size. And then um, there it is right there. And we're going to enable the keyboard. And can we type in there, bird dog? No, nope, it's not going to type. Let's try here. 
P-I-R-D-D-O-G. Try one more time. Well, maybe we... Password invalid. Okay, we'll try again. Make sure we don't have the cap locks on. D I R D D O G. Nope, that didn't take. Stay with me here. Trying to do it here in VMix is not as easy as it looks to enter keyboard stuff. Nope. Try one more time, and we'll try something else. I R D D O G. Enter. Password invalid. Is that what we get in that same sentence? Well. Let's reload the page. Try again. All else fails. We'll try another one. Let's try another one. So we've got a video web browser. 968 192.168.1.100. And there it is, so we know we're we're getting to it. We just need to enter a password. And we'll try again here. B. Nope, didn't take. B. B I R D D O G. Let's see if we get any joy on that one. Doesn't seem to be uh, responding. Let's try again. One more time. Well, that's not going to work for whatever reason. Um, I think we're on the same network. Uh, let's see if I can just get into it. In uh, Chrome, 192.168.1.100. And we'll enter the password, B-I-R-D-D-O-G, press OK. There we go. OK, let's see if we can just do a little screen cap here. Because that one just didn't want to work for whatever reason. And looks like our desktop capture is not going to cooperate either. Well, for some reason, it doesn't want to show you guys that. Go figure. How about that? Um, yeah, the password is a 0000 on the keyboard, but 
on the interface, um, the web interface, it's it's bird dog. And for some reason it just Google is just not picking it up. Let's make sure I've got the uh, hardware acceleration or whatever that is turned off. That's generally what happens when you've got that problem. We'll go into advanced settings and da -da 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 -da. One second here, folks. Appreciate your patience. Uh, preload, manage, site settings, site settings, cookies, locations, camera, microphone, notification, JavaScript, flash, images, ads, sync, handlers, USB devices. Where is the hardware acceleration? Well, don't see it. I've overlooked it somehow. So, um, do we have another browser we can use? I bet we don't. Oh, well, we've got Edge. Let's try Edge. 192.168.1.100. Password is B I R D D O G. Okay, there we go. So let's see if we can pick that one up in VMix. Capture, Microsoft Edge. Let's see if that one does anything. No. What about that one? No. What about that one? Microsoft Edge is pretty worthless. It didn't want to do anything either. Isn't that crazy? What about, um, let's try what else? No. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, I can see it. <laughs> and, uh, It's uh, got a static address, 192.168.1.100. Um, it's got a, uh, we're not going to change the passwords. Um, we can restart the keyboard, but I don't think that's going to do anything. Yeah, I think we're just, we're just hung up at, the, at this point. Just hung up. All right, let me go back here. Are your controller and camera in the same IP range? Yes. Andrew says, keep pressing back to auto. Um, not sure what you mean there. Peter says, you have to restart the P100. Andrew said, it worked for me. Had it running for five days. Peter said, what's the firmware of Andrew's? Um, Andrew says, remember, these controls are not enabled yet. Same of yours, there's only one released. Hope the firmware update will update soon. Andrew says, just restart the keyboard and try logging again. In again, it will clear any cached info. Okay, well let's let's give that a shot. We will. Uh, we will do that. So we're going to turn it off. Count of ten. Thousand one. Thousand two. Thousand three. Thousand four. Five, 
And let me turn it on so you can see it. And we're initializing here. Yeah, we probably should have start thought to do that. You know, it's funny, you can, you, you can pick up a piece of hardware and, you know, it's, it has a, a feel to it and it has a look to it and the buttons are nice and you say, oh man, I like this and then it doesn't work and you're a little bit more forgiving than if it's a piece of cheap plastic stuff and you say, oh, well, no, of course it's not going to work. This looks like something that, that should work or will work, um, but doesn't yet work. So uh, let's check the setup, zero, 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 zero. Uh, camera settings, they are the same as they were before. Keyboard settings, IP configuration is the same. Um, yep, looks like that's good. And we haven't made any yet. This guy, IP settings, payload header is on, port is 52,381. And I'm not sure if that affects anything. And we'll go back to, we'll go back to, let's just do a search again and see if search brings us anything. IP, start search, yes. Found none, so it's it's not seeing the camera. That's that's really the the idea. We'll we'll do the MDI search again. I don't think it's going to find anything because there are no MDI cameras in the system. If it does some, find something, it will be quite interesting. Okay, and it finds none there as well. So. We've got some work to do here. All right, Peter says, check port number for VizGuy key settings on camera and keyboard. Um, okay, we can do that. Did I check? I didn't check the flux capacitor. Oh, golly. All right, well, let's go check the flux capacitor and we'll check, uh, see if there's a port number in the camera. Um, so we're going to go over to the desktop for that. All right, so having tons of fun here. Let's see, let's go into the camera settings. 192.168.1.102. And let's see if we have anything like a port number. Well, yeah, there are a bunch of ports. Okay. There is a um, HTTP port, an RTSP port, a PTZ port, and a UDP port. And Andrew says, refer back to my, my PM. So let's see. Can we do that? Okay. So Andrew says, be patient, is what he says. There you go, be patient. So... Uh, we might play around with this some more, but for now, <laughs> we're gonna say it's not working. Uh, but boy, does it look good. I mean, look at this, look at that guy. He's just slicker and snuff. Um, it's kind of thing that you want it to work. You want it to work. Um, Andrew says the PTZO port is four numbers only. The keyboard's default is five. Yeah, I noticed that too. 
So, so there. Whoops, that won't work. Where's the the post show guy? There he is. All right. So we'll play with that some more off air, but I'm not going to bore you guys with that anymore. Um, you've been very, very patient and very, uh, and obviously tremendously bored. <laughs> there was nothing else in your life that was interesting to do. <laughs> um, but I have a life. I got, I got things to do. I got people to see. I got, I got, I got smarties to choke down. No, um, we're going to, we're going to cut out here. Um, but thank you for taking time and popping in today. It's been fun. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep you up to date on what goes on with this, uh, this bird dog. And it may be, you know, it may be by having this show out there that we kind of nudge those guys along a little bit um, to, uh, to get that firmware released, if that's the, if that's the issue. Um, and we'll, we'll keep you in the loop. We'll keep you in the loop. So uh, if you're watching and you have a church that needs to live stream and can't afford to, let me know. Um, we've got some retired gear we want to give away. Um, or if you know of somebody in that situation, um, have them contact me directly. So it's been a treat. Uh, thank you, Dave. Always appreciate your support and, uh, and everybody else that tuned in today. Um, Clint says, oh, I thought, I thought we were paying attention. <laughs> well, maybe other people, but I don't know about you, Goins. Um, anyway, okay, Otis, take care. Um, everybody down in Australia ways, let's, let's pray for some, some rain down there for those guys and, uh, and kill off some of these fires. Um, and certainly pray for, for peace in the world and peace in the government, especially in the USA today. Um, oh, and tune in Friday for the, the Worship Summit. Um, I'll post that info um, in the Streaming Idiots Facebook group where you can find it. So we'll let the uh, stream run out here for a second while we turn it off. And uh, other than that, we will catch you, uh, as they say, on the flip side. Thanks for watching. Take care.